Good? Recording? Yeah, okay. recording. Hey guys, um, my name's John. I'm with Top Gun Heating and Air here in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, today we're just gonna talk to you about um, some of the tools of the trade that we use. Um, this is our Milwaukee M12 Pro Press. And um, we've got some plumbing jaws. Um, we don't do plumbing, we don't mess with that, but um, we have those that came with the kit. Um, and then we have our RLS uh, Zoom Lock Jaw Kit. Um, <clears throat> so this kit basically comes with um, with eight different jaws sizes um, from inch and three eighths all the way down to quarter inch. Um, and what we use this for are our uh, zoom lock. These are brace free uh, refrigerant connections. Um, so uh, it saves you the, um, the hassle of having to pull your heavy tanks of nitro out of the truck, um, do flame watch. Um, contaminate or oxidize uh, the metal in the system when you braze um, which you know obviously if you're if you're flowing nitro with it you shouldn't have to worry about that but um, this is just one of those uh, time-saving technologies we wanted to introduce you to um, and I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on how we actually uh, make these connections these refrigerant connections um, we just completed a uh, line set that we had to run through an attic and uh, instead of have Instead of having to haul our torches and everything up into the attic, um, including our swager, and then get up, get our nitro uh, rig out and get that set up, um, that's an industry best practice that we employ here at Top Gun Air. So um, it's a good thing to do. It, it keeps um, the uh, the metal from becoming oxidized, and it keeps contaminants, uh, metal flakes, and other things that can get into your system, um, cause it to form um, acids and uh, cause uh, leaks in the coil, uh, destroy your insulation on compressor windings, um, and it also prevents you know, the, uh, the oxidation, those little metal flakes that, uh, from contaminating your system, you know, possibly blocking uh, thermostatic expansion valves, um, et cetera. So um, we're probably gonna start implementing this into our, um, our installation practices and uh, our regular installs. So, um, I'm just gonna go through this kit with you real quick here. Um, this is uh, obviously a coupling, that's a 3 8 coupling, and <clears throat> um, it has a O-ring on the inside. Now, one thing we noticed, the reason I'm, I'm actually doing this demonstration with this is because um, the O-ring, um, when we were making our connection, actually came out of this um, zoom lock connection, um, the zoom lock fitting, this coupling here. So um, that's why we're, uh, you know, it's pretty much not any use to us anymore. Um, I wasn't gonna attempt to put that, try to put that back in place. So um, we're just gonna leave it out for now. And um, I'm gonna use this as a, uh, as a demonstration. Um, these fittings are kind of are kind of pricey. Um, you know, I think this one cost, I don't know, anywhere from like eight to $9. Um, the, uh, the metal 90s and the sweeps on it. Um, they'll run anywhere from 19 to $25 or something like that. So um, definitely kind of a specialty um, tool and a specialty uh, use and purpose. Um, but uh, we're just gonna walk through the steps. So um, I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, this RLS kit, it comes with rigid pipe cutters, uh, tubing cutters. It also comes with um, two different sizes of um, these uh, deburring cones. Um, and so you've got that. Obviously you've got your, your jaws, all the different sizes. You've got a wire brush, uh, a Brillo pad. Um, you've got a, uh, a crimp gauge that's post crimp. Um, and then you've got your, your measurement. This is, uh, this is very important. This shows you, this is a depth gauge basically. And that shows you where on the um, individual size of tubing, you're going to insert that um, zoom lock coupling up to so we always mark that um, so we know um, sometimes this this uh, this dimple in here on as if you can see that I don't know if you can but there's a dimple on here it's supposed to be a stop on the inside um, one thing we notice from using that is that it's not always true so it will not always stop um, and we want to make sure that the pipe and the, the coupling is inserted over the pipe in such a way that 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 inner o-ring actually clamps down around the metal um, so 
we're just gonna do this real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the whole process with you. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this. These are really uh, heavy duty quality, um, quality tubing cutters as well. Um, this thing cuts pretty fast. Let's see, so let's set that back there. So we've got our um, we've got our tubing. Um, the next step is going to be to prep the surface. Um, one thing that we don't want to have are any um, metal burrs um, on the uh, around the outside. Um, you don't want any indentations. Um, they say to also avoid uh, stamping or imprinted uh, lettering that you might find on the inside of the pipe. So um, we're gonna take this. Uh, we're gonna take that through. I don't know if you can see the inner diameter of that, but um, I prefer to actually use this uh, pencil reamer. Um, if I can find it, I set it out here. There we go. So I'm just going to take this pencil reamer. Um, I'm going to clean up, deburr the inside of the pipe here. Make sure we don't have any metal shavings, any copper shavings on the inside. I don't know if you can see that now on the inside of that. Um, you notice the uh, the diameter change on the um, the inside of the tubing. Very important for refrigerant flow that you deburr the inside um, of that. He's trying to get a, a focus on that. We'll see. Um, but uh, it makes a huge difference. Next, I'm going to take uh, the rigid pipe reamer. Um, I'm going to ream the outside of the pipe. Get that nice and clean. Just make sure I don't feel any uh, any rough edges or burrs, metal burrs on there. Um, next, I'm going to take my uh, my Brillo pad. I'm just going to clean that really good. You want to go in a circular motion. You don't want to go lengthwise like this. Um, just clean up the outside of the pipe. Make sure it's uh, smooth as a baby's butt. Um, <clears throat> so now we've got our our pipe prepped. Um, we're ready to slide our zoom lock fitting over it. This one is the side that has the coupling in it. That's the side I'm gonna press on here. Um, and so, we just wanna, up. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, skip the step here. Um, first, we're gonna use our, our depth gauge. So we're gonna insert that pipe in there, like so. Um, just take a Sharpie, mark that. Um, that way we know where the zoom lock uh, coupling is gonna end at. forgot that that's a pretty critical step because um, like I said the stop is not always reliable on this thing so and then we're gonna we're gonna actually insert and you can see it slides it'll actually slide past um, but uh, slide past the marking but that that should be right there um, where that is okay so I'm gonna set that aside for a minute this is our Milwaukee M12 Pro Press. Now these are rigid jaws, um, so they're built for rigid presses. Um, the M12 Pro Press is the uh, is the only one, um, to my knowledge, um, that uh, is compatible. The uh, the only compatible press um, with this kit. So we're gonna lock our jaws in. Easy as that. Now the zoom lock itself. Um, the fittings are a little bit different from plumbing connections. So you have, you basically have these three rings. Um, where we're gonna place that is actually gonna be on the outside um, so that our press clamps down. Um, so on my right, I guess your left, um, on the camera, um, that's that's where we're gonna line that up. So the outside of the fitting should be should be right here lined up with the outside of the press. And then um, all we gotta do is uh, hit our button until um, our cycle completes. And that's it. So we've just pressed our fitting onto there. Um, that's not going anywhere. Um, you can see the, uh, the crimp marks where the press, uh, so it'll actually press two places. It presses around um, this, and then it also presses around the metal. Um, so it makes a very tight and solid connection. Um, we just did um, two connections on the line set in the attic. 
Um, we pressure tested with nitrogen to 450 PSI. It held for over uh, 22 minutes. And then we um, pulled a um, deep vacuum on the system. So uh, we use high flow. Um, we pull our, our Schrader cores. Uh, we moved our valve. We used our uh, valve core remover tools uh, made by Appion, uh, the quarter inch vacuum rated tools. Um, and put those on the system and then we use um, we basically use we don't have them here but um, we use two half inch hoses um, one side is a uh, quarter inch and the other side is three eighths um, and that combined with the um, the VP 85 by field piece um, we're able to get a, uh, a deep vacuum on that system so it pulled down to about 150 microns after the decay test the final vacuum was 240 so that's well below any manufacturer's recommendations you know even American Standard um, the recommendation is um, 350 microns um, we pull way below that so um, the system is dry and tight and uh, the zoom lock fittings um, worked amazingly well we didn't have to have uh, fire watch or anything in the attic. We didn't have to haul our torches up there. So um, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that demonstration. Um, a quick uh, note on uh, the price and the cost of this. Um, this we got from Acne Tools. Um, that was roughly around $1,900 with tax um, and shipping. Um, the RLS kit is available for about $2,100, um, not including shipping. Um, just do a quick Google search, search RLS jaw kit and uh, you'll find the, um, the website, or we'll post the website actually in the, uh, in the narrative um, section below. And uh, that'll give a link to where you can actually purchase these. Um, like I said, this in kit includes, includes a lot of things, pretty much everything you're gonna need. Um, and then um, there's a bunch of videos online that you can, uh, you can also look at, and we'll post a couple of links to those and, uh, and show you guys um, where uh, where you can get this stuff, but um, it's a great addition, I think, to uh, to any install crew. You can use this on mini splits. You can use it pretty much anywhere where you're making connections. Um, they even have, uh, I think, Parker Sporlin has um, uh, dryer connections, um, valves, other uh, other connections that are rated for zoom lock. So they give you an extension of metal, basically, to make sure that you can get those zoom lock coupling connectors on there and um, and make. Uh, flame free uh, refrigerant connections um, so thanks for watching um, smash that like button if this helped you out and uh, subscribe to our channel um, we're gonna be posting more stuff like this uh, in the in the future thanks guys appreciate it